Welcome to NSKN Games Small Talk. I'm Kuba. I'm Andre. Yeah, we're both from NSKN Games, as uh, you could probably guess from the title of the show. Well, uh, we're going to walk you through a couple of subjects throughout this uh, quick video. And first, we want to talk about news. Okay, first thing, uh, we're in Atlanta right now. Uh, we flew in a couple of days ago because we had some meetings here. And uh, we will be flying to uh, Dallas soon in Texas because BGG Con is coming. And because BGG Con is coming, we're gonna show some games there. And among them, there will be our oh, Essen premiere. That's a heavy box. That's Dragon's Gate College. Uh, you might have heard of that uh, in Essen. We ended up uh, on the seventh place in Geek Buzz out of 2,000 titles. So I think that's pretty good. That's a quick uh, dice drafting play by the authors of Yeda, Thomas Madaginsta and Wolf Planke. And we will be showing that for you. And the game will be available in the US. Um, around mid-February, so mid, mid to end of February. That's um, our proposed tree date for US is 20th of February. So around that time you can go and find it in your local game store. Yeah, so if you want to check it right now, uh, come to BGGCon and visit us there in booth 911. And uh, we'll be demoing that for you. And apart from that, we'll be also um, showing yet another game, one of our small games from Story Studio, that's Premier of the Sun. If you haven't heard of that, that's uh, by Frederick Marysan, the author of Saboteur. It's a drum building thing, so it's fast, it's, uh, it plays in 20 minutes from 25 players, and it will be also playable in BGGCon, right? Absolutely. And, uh, well, what about what else about news? Well, I uh, don't know if uh, you know, but there is a new publisher in the American market, it's called uh, Flying Lemur. And their first game is North Amer American Railways. I think it's a Spielworks game, so it's surely worth trying. It's like an 18xx in a, in a deck box, right? Yeah, small box, smart game. So Should be out probably some somewhere mid 2018. Yeah. Okay. So uh, look out for that because uh, there is uh, always uh, a demand for proper Euro games. This is like. I would say medium heavy game, so it's not too hard, but it's surely worth trying. And well, what else? Uh, Kickstarter. So we are doing a Kickstarter right now, but we're gonna tell you that about that more a bit in a second. I can just show you the box, Chronicles of Frost, but we'll come back to that. But we have done a Sleeps Kickstarter lately, and uh, our sleeves are just being delivered to people around the world, right? Yeah, well, um, it's been a road not without hiccups. We, our European backers, have uh, gotten their packages quite a while ago, so end of September, beginning of October. Now, our Canadian backers also got their packages from their local fulfill fulfillment center uh, two weeks back. Now, unfortunately, and I'm guessing some of you will be from the United States, all our US backers are still in for a little bit of wait. Um, well, this is more of a logistics issue, so the sleeves have been produced quite a while ago, but we had to pack them back in Europe and um, put everything in a container and ship it to the United States. And um, our logistics partner has performed, well, not to, their best of their, not to the best of their abilities. So. He means poorly. Well, I didn't want to say it, but um, anyway, without giving names or assigning blame, we're hoping that um, by the end of the month, or maybe the first days of December, there should be game, well, actually not game boxes, but rather sleeves packs in the hand of all 616, if I'm not mistaken, American backers. Um, we are doing up the absolute best we can to speed up the process, and we're talking here about a large quantity of sleeves. We're looking at a few good thousand pounds of sleeves going from Europe to the United States. In the meantime, we are preparing another campaign, but I think we're going to talk about that a bit later on. No, we can actually mention it right now. Uh, we are making another uh, sleeves campaign, it will start at the end of November, so well, about the time you people will be getting your sleeves, I mean our US backers. That's the plan right now, and there is a good reason for um, choosing this date, so as um, if, if you are a Kickstarter backer, you will know that around the holiday season, Kickstarter slows down a lot, and um, many people are focusing on what is probably a lot more important than uh, any kind of Kickstarter, even, even more important in gaming and sleeving, and that is family and the holiday season. So we want to avoid going too deep into the holiday season, but also we want to go early enough so the second batch of sleeves will be available at a decent moment, right around uh, when the big conventions are happening, when everybody is starting buying games from the new season. 
So we are aiming to go to Kickstarter at the end of November, finish um, in mid-December, and immediately place an order with our factory in China. Um, manufacturing the sleeves will be a little bit affected by the fact that um, at the end of February, actually mid-February to the end of February, there is a Chinese New Year, and that always slows down every production endeavor overseas. So we have to take that into account. So we're hoping that our sleeves will be made, uh, actually physically produced, uh, by mid-March, so then we can ship them again to Europe uh, by end of April and then sometime in May, June, perhaps even July. It should be in US. Uh, it should be in US, Canada, Australia, basically. Hoping uh, that this time there will be no more hiccups and everything will be done exactly on time. Like, no, you guys are used to us doing that. True. So, um, speaking of Kickstarters, there will be yet another one, but like Q1 of uh, 2018, uh, he really didn't want me to show you that, but I, I'm too excited. We already have a, a very draft uh, first cover. It will change, and if you'd like to, it to change it somehow, you're more than welcome to give us some remarks about it. I can't promise that we'll uh, use all of them, but we'll surely consider them. So this is Die Settlers. This is a game by um, David Tursey, and uh, it's a bug building dice game about settling, and that's all I'm gonna tell you about right now. We'll talk about it in some future um, uh, vidcasts, uh, but Die Settlers will be coming to you in uh, fall 2018, and uh, you can expect Kickstarter for that in the early 2018. So that's uh, it. Yeah. Now, since you opened this box, I'm gonna tell you a, a few more things. So first of all, I don't know if you've heard about uh, David Turzi. He is one of the well, have. up and coming designers. So if you have if you've seen Anachrony, either from Kickstarter or from their absolutely massive Essen uh, release, that's a brilliant game. And David Turzi is the guy behind that game, and that's not the only game he's designed. On top of that, we have Mihailo Dimitrievski. This name might not tell you much, but the, the Miko. He is one of the hottest illustrators right now. You would recognize him from the Valyria series or from the Riders of the North yep. Sea. Uh, okay, you, you, you're just spilling too much secrets. Okay. No, no that's secrets. It. No my, more my, secrets. My mouth is, absolutely, is forever shut. That's absolutely it. And we're done with the news part. And uh, now we're going to move to the next part, which is uh, our talk of the week. And uh, see you in a sec. Okay, talk of the week. And talk of the week is um, Chronicles of Frost, a game set in Missile Universe, uh, developed, of course, by Błażej Kubacki. Uh, who's the author of the whole universe, and uh, he's done Mistfall, Heart of the Mist, Shadowscape, and uh, well, how many backers do we have now when we record this? We're closing on 700 backers. Oh, that's nice. And um, uh, it finishes on 23rd of November, so if you don't want to miss out on this one, then please go to Kickstarter page and find Chronicles of Frost, back it for... $34. Oh, 34 bucks for uh, this little heavy box that uh, will actually be a proper adventure game, right? Absolutely. It's a, it's a deck building game in the same universe which you are used to. It's a Mistful universe. Uh, you will find the same iconic heroes. You will be able to use your miniature pack if you have it. Otherwise, it's still available through Kickstarter. Um, yeah, you can order a miniature pack uh, along uh, the Chronicles of yeah, Frost. Yeah, absolutely. You can choose. If you have the miniature pack, just go for the base game. And the sleeves. Otherwise, and uh, so of course there is an add-on um, for, sleeves for, for this $10, one. which uh, is sleeve everything. and. When I say sleeve everything, I mean everything that will come out of this Kickstarter can be sleeved with everything in that add-on. So, whatever surprises we're preparing for you, that's included. And there will be surprises, right? Well, have we ever had the Kickstarter without surprises? True. I have to tell you that, as far as I know, the author is actually working on solo rules right now. Yeah? Well, that's the rumor. He's not, gonna, he's not sharing too much with us, as uh, we are far away in the States and he's still back in the, uh, the office Europe. in Poland, but... Um, well, we've heard rumors of a solo mode. So, uh, from 2 to 4, it will be now 1 to 4 players, right? Let's hope so. And, uh, okay, so it will it plays in about 45, 60 minutes, as far as I remember. Yeah, depends a little bit on the number of players, but once you get the gist of the game, it plays really quickly, it's fun to play, It's um, you will find many interesting things which you see in your favorite tech builders like Dominion or Ascension, but you'll find a lot of new things, so you will move on a modular map made of cards. You will explore. You will find monsters. You will unlock special have abilities on the cards. Even some some illustrations. I mean, most of them are done. 
Actually, the, the game has been uh, properly built until now, so the rules are final, the illustrations are 90% done. Of course, we still have to work on a few of the stretch goals, um, but overall we expect quite a quick delivery for this one. What do you mean? So, um, most of the backers will get their games sometime between April, beginning of April and end of May 2018, if everything goes well. Um, again, uh, this one will be produced in China, so there might be small delays to the Chinese New Year, but we've already reserved um, space with the factory, so there is a, a slot in their production cycle reserved for Chronicles of Frost and every goodie which is included with the Kickstarter. Well, and if you're not convinced yet, uh, then you can either go to the Kickstarter uh, page and find reviews there by uh, Slicker Drips or Rado, and uh, and just you know see how it goes, or visit our 911 booth in uh, at VGG Con and just play it with us. So that is uh, talk of the week for now. And now we're gonna tell you about some really great games that we've played uh, lately. We're back with great games we've played recently, and well, there are a couple of games that I recently played and uh, gave me lots of play pleasure. You know, uh, Essen has just been passed. One of the games that I found out there was Azul. And Azul is a really smart, um, kind of abstract pattern building game that somehow brought patchwork to my mind, but it doesn't really have to do much about it, apart from the fact that you put tiles on the on, on your kind of, you know, board thing. And uh, it plays fast, it scales well, because we, I played with two, three and four people and it was always fun. And um, the game had really approachable price in Essen, and for what you got in the box, I believe it's, it's really a decent, decent thing. And uh, what else did we play lately? Was it Godfather? Yeah, Godfather is a game we actually played last week, and uh, we played with a full complement of five players. It went, um, well, rather fast for a game of that size, of that magnitude. It's, it's, a, it's a fun game, it, uh, it captures a lot of the Godfather universe brings you back to the to the days of the prohibition and the the, the cutthroat of that world. Oh yeah so the game is cutthroat. I mean if, if you're looking for something nice and cozy, that's not that's not the Godfather. Expect your typical uh, worker placement game with a very nice twist where you get affected by the, the decisions of other players. You will feel a little bit of negative interaction, but not too much. So it's still pleasant for you, for Euro gamers. Well, not sure about you though. <laughs> well, but I, was I am a Euro gamer, and I got uh, really worried when I saw, you know, my mobsters being put into Hudson River one after another. You've got a bit of set collection. Um, you've got very clean, smart mechanics. You can explain the game in 15, maybe 20 minutes. Uh, it flows really nicely, and it was a lot of fun. True, it does feel like an entry game for people who want to see the, 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 the immersive thematic world of games. That, that's something really worth uh, consideration. And the production quality is absolutely great, especially for the Kickstarter edition. And the miniatures and yeah. everything, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, a, it's a game we, I can personally completely recommend. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, well, lately I also played um, Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. I'm, I mean, the Castle of Burgundy I'm, are my number one game ever. And, uh, well, I play the, the dice game, which is like a small dice kind of version, like pen and paper as well, because you basically you have this uh, little cute notebook that you take sheets out of and, and mark your results there. And uh, it was fun. It was fun. If you like, uh, for example, La Granja, uh, No Siesta, then you would love uh, Castle of Burgundy, the, the, the dice game. It's fast, it's uh, approachable, uh, easy rules, uh, it's not that easy to win though, which is good. And uh, well, I say it's like 8 out of 10. Uh, of course, that's probably because of my love for Castles of Burgundy. So for uh, an average gamer, it would be like 7 out of 10, but it's still very good. And uh, I highly recommend this one. Is There's... it still a Stefan Feld game? Yes, I mean, it's Stefan Feld and somebody else, so okay. it's like, you know. So that probably... alone recommends the game. Yeah. And uh, Sentient, Sentient by Renegade Games. Oh my, this is one of the most brilliant games I've played in many, many months. I really, really like it. It's uh, beautiful, it plays fast, it's got this very innovative like dice manipulation system because you have five dice on your board and you get to manipulate them by the cards that you gather during the, during the turn. 
it's quite competitive and uh, because there is some a bit of area control but those slight tiny mechanisms that are put in the game just work perfectly and well. uh, on, on the on the bright on the brighter side even it's very easy to explain so he explained to me the rules in about five minutes and then we started playing but that's because I'm brilliant well no, nobody denies that <laughs> however it's about the game yeah okay all right so yeah it's it's a it's a smart game um, very good comp uh, um, quality components plays rather fast and you can play it with gamers alike or with your family with friends who are not really into the hobby and because yeah. the rules are simple straightforward but uh, the, there is very I mean there is depth and there is strategy inside yeah. but if you're looking for something for even younger audience then you should uh, have a look at harvest dice it's uh, in US it's distributed by great folks games I believe and uh, it's a brilliant little game uh, you roll dice, so you gather uh, vegetables, you feed your pig, and uh, it's again pen and paper. You, you mark your results. I mean, you have this three really nicely printed out notes and notebook, and, and you know everything is cool. But the game is small, and it's got two like difficulty levels. So you can play it with kids when it's really easy, and I think that you know a five, six year old gamer's kid will get it, you know, in in no time. But you can also play it in a harder mode when actually proper gamers can compete with each other and uh, well Harvest Dice is really good for you but uh, so that's probably about the games that we've played lately and uh, really you know they spoke to us but we also have something that we will call in this show Hidden Peril and it's time for a Hidden Peril Hidden Pearl. Hidden Pearl is a game that we basically found somewhere. We didn't. We haven't heard about it before. Uh, we didn't. We didn't know anything about it, and we found it. We played it, and we believe it's something that should be brought to a broader uh, audience because it's really, really great. And this week's uh, Hidden Pearl is Riga. Yes, it's Riga. It's so it, it comes with a story behind, actually, because we played this game for the first time in a um, very nice cafe in Nashville, Tennessee, when yep. we went for the Southern Hobby Open House. Yep. And, um, well, we had a bit of time to, to kill and we did it in a very nice way. This is a great game. Yeah, it was actually Gatlin, right? And it was, um, so we played a game we brought from Essen, Germany, that is called Riga, which is in Latvia. And we played it in Nashville, uh, Tennessee, US. So that, that was pretty fun. It's done by Stefan Rieshaus and published by Ossia Spiele publishing from Germany, but it comes with both German and English rules. So I know you can have three uh, like micro uh, expansions for it, and we play with all three of them. And each of them does a really good job. So base game alone is a pretty a pretty solid game, which comes in a small box, but um, there is meat on the bone. You you get to draft cards and build cities. Um, it's it's rather difficult to explain exactly how the game works in a few words. Well, it's basically uh, the way when you... It's about set collection and city building at the same time, but you don't like build your city in a way that every building you build affects the other buildings. No, rather each building has its own ability, but it's all done like on cards. So you basically just purchase some resources cards, then to build your city cards, but the game goes really fast. So. Basically, you are trying to do your best uh, before the time runs out. And um, so the game is rather competitive. Uh, the good news is that there are several strategies which allow you to win. We're not going to get into details, but the two of us, when we played the game, we went very different paths and we finished up both of us with 53, remember, yeah, 53 points each. Yeah, with, with completely different strategies. So that tells that the game is really, really well balanced and uh, something that you will definitely enjoy putting on the table. Absolutely. So uh, Riga by uh, Stefan Rieshaus from Osterspiele is our hidden pearl on this episode. So we'll have a contest, and the contest will be about... Obviously, Dragons Gate College. So if you remember from the first part of, uh, part of this vidcast, this is um, our hit from Spiel Essen, and it's coming to US in a few months. So um, we want to introduce the game to you together with this uh, vidcast, so... So, um, let's say that by the end, by 27th of November, which is the date when the new episode will show uh, on YouTube, uh, we will 
have a copy of Dragon City College to give out for you for free, well, shipping included, for every 100 subscribers that we will have by that day. So, if for example, by 27th November we have 357 subscribers, then three people will get a copy of this game, well, they will just draft it from among all of our subscribers. So, um, please subscribe our channel, share the news because the more you know people uh, join us, the more games there will be to win. And uh, I hope that you've enjoyed what you've seen here and you'll come back on the 27th of November. So, yeah, Kuba's out. Andre out. See you later. Enjoy your Bye. Week.